So there are two ways to determine outliers uh, in statistics. And one is utilizing the IQR, and the other one is utilizing standard deviation and z-scores. What we're going to go over inside of this video is how do we determine outliers based upon the use of z-scores. All right, so we need a definition of uh, uh, what it means to be an outlier. So an outlier using z-scores, so we'll call it z-scores, is a data point with a z-score less than negative two or greater than positive two. So a z-score tells me whether or not, right, a z-score says how many standard deviations a data point is from the mean. Right, so here's our mean, call it mu, and we could talk about standard deviations, that is, is values that are the same distance away from the mean, average distances away from the mean. So like this might be one standard deviation, one sigma, and this might be two sigma. This would be negative one sigma, negative two sigma. The farther away that we are from the mean, the rarer the element supposedly gets, right? Or the more, um, the, the bigger or the smaller it is in terms of, in, in not absolute terms, but in relative terms relative to the entire data set. So what we mean by something being an outlier is it's fairly rare. So if we're more than two standard deviations away from the mean, then what we're saying is, is that we have something that's very rare or that's rare enough to be called an outlier. So let's suppose that what we have is we have um, a basketball team. And on that basketball team, the average age is 27 so mu equals 27 that's the average age okay and 27 years old and we have a standard deviation sigma equal to 3.5 okay years what we want to know is is we want to know what would constitute somebody who is an outlier young unusually young so the first thing to get for something to be unusually young is just that it's going to be a number of years less than um, less than the average, right? Because it's going to be on the young side. And so how many? Two standard deviations. So that's going to be 27 minus 3.5. That's one standard deviation minus 3.5, which we actually write as 27 minus 2 times 3.5, which is equal to 20 years old. So that is an unusually young person, two standard deviations away from the mean. An unusually old person is two standard deviations above the mean, so that would be 27 plus 3.5, plus 3.5, or 27 plus 2 times 3.5, which is equal to 34 years old. So somebody is unusual in terms of their age on this basketball team if they are younger than 20 years old or older than 34. So if we asked you whether or not somebody who was 28 was actually unusually young or old, the answer would be no, because they are not more than two standard deviations away from the mean, okay? And so consequently, we would not consider them to be unusually old. Difficult, okay? Or if we were to say, well, if they were 17 years old, would that make them unusually young? And the answer to that is yes, they are unusually young because they are more than two standard deviations away. They're younger than 20. So these values that we found here, they're like the cutoffs. How we found the cutoffs? We subtracted, to get unusually young, we subtracted two standard deviations. And to get unusually old, we added two standard deviations. Let's give another example. Let's say, for example, that what we wanted to do is we wanted to determine whether or not somebody was, uh, we wanted to talk about the um, test scores, okay? So suppose the average test score was 65. 
and it ha we have a set standard deviation sigma of seven, uh, seven points, okay? So an unusually low score would be 65 minus two times seven, right? Because we're gonna get smaller, and that would be a score of 51. That's an unusually score, low score. Or we really wanna say lower than 51, 51 or lower. An unusually high score would then be 65 plus two times seven, which equals 79. And so higher than a 79 would be an unusually high score. So if we wanted to say, hey, did you get an unusually high score? Right? Well, it depends. What'd you get? Oh, I got a 91. Is that unusually high? Yes, it is unusually high. On the other hand, if you said, hey, I got a 72. Is that unusually high? The answer is no, it's not. Okay? Anything higher than 79 is unusually high. Anything lower than 51 is unusually low. And how we figure that out, right, is by subtracting two standard deviations from the mean for the lower end or adding two standard deviations away for the upper end. Right, they're basically the, the values that are on the big side on either side. So that completes this video. That's how you determine whether or not something is an outlier, okay? And the bounds for outliers. What makes something unusually uh, high or unusually 